Okay, hi. My name is Ben. Um, I, I'm one of the co-founders and uh, I, I basically run this company called uh, JMEQ. Uh, you can just look us up at jmeq.com. Basically what we do is very simple. We make software. And we make a specific type of software that goes out there and mines what people are saying on the social media. Now what has happened is that people are saying all kinds of things on the social media. So what I'm going to show you here is uh, three different case studies in uh, three different approaches um, to how data that will be collected can be then used. Uh, uh, yeah, and you, you'll see how it works. So um, the first one here is actually something that we did for an R&D project. For those of you who can't see uh, it very clearly because it is a bit blur, what you have here is a map of conversations that are happening uh, on Twitter uh, with regards to the three telcos that we know of in Singapore. So, of course, the red ones are, um, are Singtel. So these are people who actually mention Singtel on Twitter. Uh, Starhub, mentions of Starhub, including, including others uh, that they mentioned as well. And in this slightly more scattered corner is M1. Um, and the conversations uh, are, are on the site. Now what is really interesting from, from mapping uh, data out like this is that you can immediately see where things matter. Um, you can immediately see where the largest dot is and it's kind of up there uh, in the red segment. And this red dot, uh, oh, I wish there was, it was brighter a bit. Um, what's happening here is that this red dot is connected to all the other dots that are lighted up right now. And they're connected by lines uh, that you can't really see right now. But there are multiple types of lines. There are red color lines and white color lines. What's happening here is we're showing you that the red color lines are lines that are being retweeted by people. And why people retweet this guy is because this guy is Singtel PR. Now, unfortunately, this guy has nothing to do with the brand Singtel. The guy who owns his account, Singtel PR, is pretty much just some guy on the street. Nobody really knows who he is. And he's there to make fun of Singtel. He just writes sarcastic stuff, funny stuff, and he looks out for people who talk about Singtel, who complain about their problems, and he replies to them, you know, you might as well just change carriers or something. And he does that. He goes out there and he just uh, ruins the brand. And a lot of people over time have found that he's actually quite funny uh, because he, he pokes so much fun at Singtel. So if, I'm sorry you can't see it, but there are a lot of red lines emanating from this guy, which means that a lot of people actually take his tweets take his content and start spreading it, saying that, you know, uh, you know, you guys have to take a look at this as well because it's so funny. Um, and there are a lot less uh, white lines, but there are white lines. Uh, and one of the examples actually is this guy. Uh, what happens with this guy is, is that he, uh, this guy's name, this username is Green Tea Cup, by the way, um, is that he, he, he actually thought that Singtel, was, Singtel PR was the official channel. So when he was complaining, he actually complained and he did at Singtel PR uh, and thinking that, that the people at Singtel would actually listen. So, but unfortunately, uh, they don't. Uh, and he just gets made fun of uh, more and more. Uh, so this is actually happening on Twitter and this is kind of uh, what it looks like. Now, in contrast to that, this corner here where you see this green dot, um, and now let me explain to you, the green dot has a lot of white lines emanating from it. Now this dot here is Starhub Cares. It's an account on Twitter called Starhub Cares. And this is Starhub's official channel for customer service. And the reason there are white lines going out from it is because they're having conversations. People are actually saying, you know, there's some problems with my broadband, there's some problems with my mobile phone. And these guys are actually replying directly to them and having a conversation with them on Twitter. And so this is actually a really good example and a positive example. And you can see that some of the lines actually reach all the way up to the Singtel camp and kind of moving over to the M1 camp because that's what happens um, when you start having conversations, people who, who, you know, who never knew you would, you know, you would get, suddenly get replies because they're looking out for you. And so that's what's going on here. Um, there's a lot more data here. Uh, and uh, we actually have a video of this, uh, which you can actually find here if you're, if you're interested in uh, taking a look at it. There's a lot more details in, and many, many notes on that chart. Uh, but just to be a bit quick and go through. 
uh, what I have to cover today. Um, that, by the way, that, that video that we put out actually led to this story. Uh, so the Straits Times decided that you know, it's, it's interesting enough and they went on to do their own investigations and they found out, uh, to my surprise as well, that there is another fake account, uh, a pretty good one, called uh, SMRT CEO. So uh, if, if you're out for good laughs, uh, check out that one in Singtopia. Um, okay, so other things that we do, this is actually a, a subset of the product that we do normally sell. What you saw just now is not something we sell. What you saw just now was pretty much uh, R&D testing and looking at relationships um, of uh, people interacting on social media across brands. Now, what I have here is an actual case study of what really goes on uh, with a real brand uh, using our system. Um, this is the case study of DBS, uh, and everybody would remember what happened on July the 5th. Uh, the network went down, really bad outage, internet banking was down, ADMs were down, um, and, and that was really nasty. So what you see here in this large spike is actually a lot of the conversations that happened uh, at that point in time. So people on Twitter, on Plurk, on blogs and all that, they are going there and they're saying, you know, uh, I, I, I can't draw money, I can't have breakfast and things like that. Um, and after a while, the buzz, as you can see, this is one day as, as, as time goes by and the buzz diminishes uh, slightly. The next day, when people wake up in the morning, the newspaper covers it, and then you see another spike. Um, so this is kind of a reflection of what really goes on on the social media. Now, what's, what happened over a longer period of time? So from the 5th of July, when it first happened, things were dying down. You know? The chatter was kind of uh, going away. Uh, people started to forget and forgive uh, DBS for their mistakes. And then all of a sudden, the DBS CEO apologizes and puts up a uh, a big story in the Straits Times uh, takes out a big ad, and sometimes we wonder why. Uh, because what happened is that it reignited the the conversation. People online started talking about um, about DBS issues again. But the real implication here actually was not so much for DBS. Uh, in fact, it could actually be a pretty decent ploy. Uh, because what happened from then, first of July to now, is that they brought IBM into this conversation. When it first happened, not that many people blamed IBM, not many people said anything about IBM. Um, a few people uh, mentioned it, but when the full-on apology came out, they mentioned IBM's fault, IBM did this at a data center and did that, and that story went global because IBM is a global brand. So all the way to the US and all over the world, that happened, that spike happened. And on our system, you will be able to see that when you detect for uh, negative things, uh, at first people didn't blame IBM that much. Uh, you know, just a little bit. Uh, some people said nasty things. But when that spike occurred, what happened was that a lot more uh, negativity, a lot more blame was thrown uh, towards IBM. Uh, so this is an example of what happens uh, on the social media uh, and in our local context. Um, okay, so my, my third and last example and case study of, of uh, how we make use of data is to actually examine not what we saw just at first was relationships and what we saw just now was buzz. Now this one looks at content. Um, being SITF and being in Singapore, I'm quite sure you guys are familiar with the Communic Asia event in Singapore. Um, so what, what happened here was that we looked at the data the week before Communic Asia happened. And we took a look at what, what people were talking about, and we started to categorize the content based on the conversations, what people were saying. So some people talked about promotions. Other people were looking for girls to be at the booths. Uh, other people were talking about the after parties and things like that. So you can actually see a breakdown of uh, the conversations. Now, this is really, really useful because take your own brand, and you can actually put in your brand and find out what would happen uh, and what people are talking about. Uh, we, work with, we work with vendors that are really large and they have you know, stakes in many different uh, areas, business units and all that, and sometimes they don't even know uh, which area people do have an issue with uh, in their company until they really look at the data this way. So during the event, during the event um, this is actually what we found out, that, um, that the things that people like to talk about at the, at the head of it is uh, money. 
people were always all interested in investments and revenue and stock prices. And then we also noticed uh, new things popping up, things that uh, weren't often talked about at Communic Asia in the past. Uh, things like location, motion, games. Uh, in the past, it was very much uh, B2B and uh, enterprise technology. And you can see things like network security, which was like you know hardcore Communic Asia stuff, kind of moving towards the end, uh, where the conversations they're still there, definitely. I mean, all your big players are still there, but they get they get drowned out by uh, talk about a lot more uh, interesting things. Okay. And um, this one's quite interesting because um, in, in the space of uh, telecom networks, a lot of people were debating whether it was WiMAX or LTE that people cared about and wanted to deploy in Singapore for the 4G network. And so what, what you can actually see is that after the conference happens, um, where the conversations are, which, which technology is being talked about the most. Uh, and of course, if you drill down inside, you'll actually see why. Uh, and here, from a branding point of view, we see um, which brand comes up on top. So it's very interesting to note how Skype uh, came out on top. And I think one good reason why Skype did come out on top was because um, their CEO was in town. The CEO delivered the keynote, and they had a pretty decent booth uh, at the event. Um, and then you can actually see the breakdown of some of the top uh, brands that took place there. Yeah. So, um, and the last one is also from a market point of view. Now, conversations on the social media don't just take place uh, in Singapore or in your locality or just globally. You can actually break it down. Uh, and our software actually helps you to do that. Uh, so conversations do come from different places, and they do talk about different places. And so of course, this being Community Asia, you will be able to see where the focus is. And a lot of people were focusing a lot more on Asia as opposed to just the world at large. Okay, so that's that's it for me. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Yeah.